1993 edition of the Robinson Rockets could be nicknamed the Street Fighters, playing just four of their 14 games at home. Starting appropriately on the road in Rockdale, the Rockets established defense as their forte, causing a fumble on the Tigers' second possession with Stephen Connor corralling the pick skin at the Rockdale 19. Four plays later, Jason Tucker would establish himself as the Rockets' big playmaker with a circus catch in the end zone, and Robert Fry's point after had Robinson out front early 7-0. Rockdale proved to be just as opportunistic, taking a rocket fumble in for a score on the first possession of the second half. Terry Ridge gave Robinson another opportunity on the last play of the third quarter with an interception, but the chance for insurance points died twice on downs at the Tiger 15. Rick Green gave Robinson a chance to ice the game with a fumble recovery inside the final two minutes, but Rockdale forced a punt and parlayed an incredible twice tip pass and roughing the passer penalty into a game-winning field goal. The 9-7 loss served as a lesson to the Rockets to take advantage of all the opportunities given to them by their opponents. Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos is where the Rockets learned the true value of capitalizing on an opponent's mistake. A fumble recovered by Toby Cockerham in the first quarter wasn't taken advantage of, but when Dean Cummings covered a second quarter fumble at the Sinton 24, Anthony Cacciatore turned it into a 7-0 lead on a 13-yard pass from Ronnie Stevens. After Sinton closed the gap to 7-6 by capitalizing on a rocket miscue early in the second half, Cacciatore struck again with a 44-yard TD catch. Alex Ridge followed that by recovering a Sinton fumble, which Rick Green turned into points on a one-yard plunge. John Hunt then got in on the act by recovering a fumble on the ensuing kickoff at the Sinton four, and two plays later, Green was in the end zone again for a 28-6 lead. A stingy defense led by Cameron Keller, Keith Adamick, and Kyle Wilson made Sinton use the rest of the fourth quarter clock to score a final touchdown, but when the final seconds ticked off, the Rockets had claimed the 28-12 victory. The trip to Grosbeck afforded the Rockets one more learning experience before district competition. Against the Goats, the role of special teams became apparent when Terry Red set up the Rockets' first scoring opportunity by returning a punt to the Grosbeck 37. Twelve plays and five minutes later, Ronnie Stevens hit Anthony Cacciatore with a two-yard TD pass and Robinson had staked themselves to a 7-0 advantage. Tim DeLeon swiped the Goats' next pass but it was a fumble recovery by Warren Bradley later in the second quarter, which set up the Rockets' next score. A 36-yard field goal by Robert Fry gave Robinson a 10-0 halftime lead, but the lead stood up only because of some great defensive efforts like this sack by Brandon Higgins and this heads-up play on a screen pass by Marcus Hensel. The third quarter started strangely as the Rockets kicked off from their own 20 after being penalized for arriving late from the locker room and then kicking the first kickoff out of bounds. The good field position helped Grosbeck close the gap to 10-6, but fumble recoveries by Stephen Connor and Tim DeLeon stopped Grosbeck threats to take the lead. Then with less than two minutes to go, the Goats special team turned in the play of the game. Toby Cockerham gave Robinson slim hope of salvaging victory by knocking down the return man at the two. But Grosbeck hammered home the game winner, handing Robinson a second last minute loss, 12 to 10. The district opener against Lorena was a triple celebration. Not only was it the Rockets' first home game of the year, it was homecoming. Rocket offense was celebrating the return of Jason Tucker, who missed the previous two games with an injury. Tucker took little time to join the festivities as he leaped high into the air to snag the Rockets' first touchdown on a 19-yard pass from Ronnie Stevens. Next time down the field, it was Tucker again, this time from 25 yards out for a 14-0 Rocket advantage. 
Brandon Higgins wasn't going to let the offense have all the fun as he covered a fumble on the Leopards' next possession. Tucker then started the Rockets' goalward with this 21-yard reception. Gary Hoffman got 15 yards closer with this nifty run. And Rick Green capped the drive for a 21-0 lead that became 24-0 by halftime thanks to one more outstanding play from Tucker and a 30-yard field goal from Robert Fry. One more lesson for the Rockets to learn was the importance of scoring on your first possession of the second half while stopping your opponent's initial second half thrust. The Rocket offense took the second half kickoff and held the ball for almost six minutes, going 53 yards in 11 plays. Green got the scoring honors again on a one yard plunge. Terry Ridge, meanwhile, stopped the Leopards in their tracks with an interception three plays later. That gave coach Nathan Barrier a chance to play his reserves as the homecoming crowd celebrated a 31-14 victory and the crowning of Mandy Lewis as Robinson's 1993 homecoming queen. Back on the road for week five, the Rockets showed they didn't forget any of the lessons they learned in the previous four games. Even when they made a mistake, someone would come up with a big play, like this Jason Tucker interception to offset a fumbled punt. The Rockets also deployed some weapons the Gatesville Hornets didn't expect, like running back Anthony Black, who gained 30 of the 45 yards in the Rockets' first touchdown drive, including the final eight for the score, and Mickey Vasquez, who gained 39 yards in a time-consuming drive midway through the second quarter. Alex Ridge also added to the arsenal with a nine-yard gain on Robinson's next TD drive. Stephen Connor picked up 19 of the 60 yards with this catch, and Terry Ridge made it 14-0 Rockets at halftime with a 33-yard TD reception. The colorful backfield of black and green dominated Robinson's opening drive of the second half. Anthony Black gained 48 yards, while Rick Green added 18 and a touchdown for a 21-0 advantage. Larry Sutton followed that with a fumble recovery at the Gatesville 20 on the ensuing kickoff. Alex Ridge and Rick Green got it to the one, where Gary Hoffman followed Scott Holloway and Ben Draper into the end zone for a final score of Rockets 28, Hornets nothing. defense seemed to like the taste that the Gatesville shutout left in their mouths as they swarmed over the Conley cadets like piranha on a feeding frenzy. During the entire first half, Conley lost more yards than they gained. Rick Green, Dean Cummings, Toby Cockerham, Stephen Connor, and Will Riddle all made tackles which produced negative yardage. Terry Ridge dealt the most severe blow though when he picked off a Conley pass and returned it 40 yards for a touchdown. The defense was so pumped it could have single-handedly defeated the cadets, but the offense gave them a breather every now and then and managed a couple of touchdowns on their own. Matter of fact, they scored on their opening drive, going 56 yards in just five plays. Anthony Black got the TD on a 35-yard scamper. Jason Tucker was also in top form with two great punt returns. This 26-yard run set up the Rockets' final TD, which Rick Green scored behind a block from Michael Connor. But the night belonged to the defense as they continued to pound the cadets in the second half. Marcus Hensel scored one of four second-half sacks for the Rockets, while Dean Cummings caused further frustration for the cadets by recovering a fumble. The final blow, though, was dealt once again by Terry Ridge who picked off his second pass of the night, preserving the shutout and a 20 to nothing victory. With back-to-back -back shutouts on the road, the Robinson defense was anxious to display their stingy talents at home against Marlin. Anthony Cacciatore swatted down a pass to stop Marlin's first drive, and then Brandon Higgins stopped the dog's second drive with a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. 
Higgins also excelled on special teams by recovering a fumble after a second quarter Robinson punt. That led to the Rockets' first score on a 32-yard pass from Gary Hoffman to Jason Tucker that bounced off the back of a fallen defender right into Tucker's waiting arms. That's worth a second look. Tim DeLeon turned in the next defensive gym with an interception and return to the Marlin 44. John Richards then caught two passes, which moved the ball to the two, where Toby Cockerham got the call for a 14-0 Robinson advantage at halftime. The second half opened with Robinson driving 73 yards in seven plays. Anthony Black started things with a 16-yard run. Then Toby Cockerham hauled in a pass for a 14-yard gain. Jason Tucker finished the drive with a 27-yard touchdown catch to make it 21-0. Stephen Connor followed that with an interception, so once again, the Rockets had dominated the opening minutes of the third quarter. The domination carried over to the offensive line where Michael Connor, Silvano Alberto, Greg Jones, Scott Holloway, and Ben Draper blasted open a hole that Anthony Black slid through for a 75-yard touchdown gallop. Will Riddle later forced a bad pitch that Toby Cockerham recovered at the Bulldog 33, and that set up another Rocket score, which Cockerham got on a 10-yard pass. With a 34-0 lead and seven minutes still to play, the Rocket Reserves got a chance to show their stuff. Lance Key scored a sack, while Larry Sutton hauled in an interception. Starsky Lewis also helped run out the clock with a 14-yard reception. It's been 12 quarters now since anyone has scored on Robinson, and the Rocket record now stood at 5-2. Maybe back-to-back -back home games adversely affected these street fighters when Troy came to town because it took some time before the Rockets took off against the Trojans. Jason Tucker provided the only first-half spark with an interception that Anthony Black turned into a touchdown nine plays later. But that was it during the first 24 minutes as Robinson went to the locker room ahead just 7-0. Apparently, someone lit a fire under the Rockets at halftime as they came out spewing like a Roman candle. A pass to Jason Tucker turned into a 58-yard touchdown after Tucker ricocheted off the Trojan safety. Then Tim DeLeon and Scott Holloway blasted the ball loose on the ensuing kickoff, and Tucker was right there to pick up the pigskin and bolt 34 yards for a 21-0 lead. Next time Tucker touched the ball, he gained 20 yards on a reverse. That started an eight-play, 62-yard drive, which ended on a five-yard TD romp by Anthony Black in a 27-0 lead. The defense also caught fire as Dean Cummings, Anthony Cacciatore, and Rick Green made successive plays which stopped Troy's only second-half scoring threat. Meanwhile, the reserves got into the scoring act as Kyle Wilson, Keith Adamick, and David Gurley threw key blocks which set Mickey Vasquez loose for a 62-yard touchdown run. The final was Rockets 34, Trojans nothing, and now for 16 quarters, the Rocket defense has kept goose eggs on the scoreboard. Back to the buses, the Rockets motored to Siberia, or at least it felt that way, as a 40 mile per hour icy north wind greeted them at La Vegas Pirate Field. Taking the win into consideration, the Rocket defense had to deny La Vega any scoring chance during the first quarter, and did. Dean Cummings covered a bad pitch to stop the Pirates' first chance, then good coverage by Warren Bradley, Terry Ridge, and Stephen Connor helped Marcus Hensel score a fumble recovery to stop another Pirate drive. When the teams changed sides for the second quarter, Tim DeLeon forced the Pirates to punt from deep in their own territory. From the 24, it took just one pass to Jason Tucker and a four-yard run by Anthony Black for the Rockets to hit pay dirt. One more short punt by the Pirates placed Robinson at the La Vega 37, and this time Black covered the ground in just one play for a 14-0 halftime lead. The Rockets had the win in the third quarter and took advantage quickly as Silvano Alberto recovered a fumble on the second half kickoff. 
Gary Hoffman followed that with two short passes to Toby Cockerham, and now the advantage was 20 to nothing. La Vega did manage to drive as far as the Robinson 39 into the wind, but never got any closer. Anthony Black, though, did score against the win in the fourth quarter to make the final Rockets 26, Pirates nothing. Mickey Vasquez secured Robinson's fifth straight shutout with a fourth quarter interception. The icy win at La Vega gave Robinson a share of the district title and a guaranteed spot in the playoffs. So there was little to play for when Cameron came to town for the regular season finale. Cameron, though, had to win to claim a playoff spot, and they gave the Rockets a dose of their own medicine. The first half was a defensive struggle, the only points coming on a safety after Cameron blocked a punt. The only touchdown of the game came on the initial drive of the second half. Cameron going 56 yards in 14 plays while chewing up seven minutes of the third quarter clock. An interception stopped Robinson's first drive of the second half and resulted in a Cameron field goal. The Yeoman picked off two more passes and kicked a final three-pointer to make it 15-0. But the regular season ended with Robinson at 7-3 and three in district co-champs. They now headed for the playoffs in search of a state championship. Playoff road began in Waxahachie against the Fairfield Eagles. Clearing blocks at the 20 from Jimmy Rape, Chris Griffin, and Scott Holloway. Opened a hole for Jason Tucker, and with John Richards running downfield interference, Tucker took the opening kickoff 92 yards for a touchdown. The quick score revved up the Rocket defense, which allowed Fairfield just four first half first downs. A sack by Brandon Higgins stopped one Eagle drive, while Tim DeLeon and Toby Cockerham stopped another with great defensive plays. Stephen Connor also stopped Eagle threats with a fumble recovery and this interception. Just one play after that, Jason Tucker was in the end zone again after hauling in a pass from Ronnie Stevens for a 14-0 halftime lead. It was almost 21-0 at halftime as Terry Ridge picked off Fairfield's final pass of the period and got as close as the 10-yard line. But Anthony Black made it 21-0 early in the third quarter when he capped the Rockets' opening drive of the half with a 17-yard TD sprint. That's all the points the Rockets would get, but far more than they needed. As the defense recorded its sixth shutout of the season, Tim DeLeon sealed the victory with one last interception. Defense set the tone of the area playoff match against Crockett at Kyle Field and College Station. Marcus Hensel recovered a fumble on Crockett's second play from scrimmage, and a 23-yard pass from Ronnie Stevens to Jason Tucker had the Rockets in front early once again, 7-0. A Warren Bradley sack, and this tackle by Kyle Wilson stopped the Bulldogs' second possession, and just four plays later, a Gary Hoffman to Tucker connection had the Rockets on top, 14-0. Dean Cummings then sacked Crockett's next drive, and that resulted in good field position, which allowed Robert Fry to try a 36-yard field goal. The kick just slipped over the crossbar, so with three minutes still to play in the first quarter, Robinson enjoyed a 17-0 advantage. More excellent defense kept the score that way until midway through the fourth quarter. Brandon Higgins and Rick Green combined on one sack, while Higgins also recorded a solo, as did Warren Bradley. An Alex Ridge interception further frustrated the Bulldogs, as did Dean Cummings, as he swatted down passes at the line of scrimmage. Crockett did manage to score by taking advantage of a fumbled punt, but Anthony Black kept the game out of reach with a seven-yard TD jaunt inside the final two minutes. Warren Bradley iced the game by recording his third solo sack of the night. The defense collected eight sacks in all, while allowing Crockett just seven first downs. In the regional finals against Sealy, the offense proved they could dominate a game much like the Rocket defense. Turning the most routine plays into long distance touchdowns, the Rockets built a lead that would not be topped by the Tigers. 
A simple slant across the middle to Jason Tucker turned into a 7-0 Robinson lead as Tucker turned on the speed and outraced defenders 86 yards to pay dirt. Early in the second quarter, Anthony Black got great blocks from Stephen Connor, Scott Holloway, and Ben Draper to blast into the secondary where he outfought defenders for an 82-yard touchdown run and a 14-0 lead. The defense did set up the next score as Toby Cockerham hammered the ball loose and Warren Bradley picked it off in midair. Taking the more conventional approach, the offense took five plays to cover the 35 yards to the end zone with Rick Green scoring the tally from seven yards out. That was enough to send the Rockets to the state quarterfinals, but they added one more score on a 19-yard pass from Gary Hoffman to Tucker. Seeley did manage a late TD to make the final 27-6. The Rockets were now one of eight teams left in the 3A playoffs and headed back to College Station for a quarterfinal showdown with Columbus. Maybe it was the wet field, maybe it was the bone chilling cold, or maybe it was the ominous cloud of fog that hung over Kyle Field. Whatever it was, the Rockets made enough mistakes against Columbus to lose six games. Despite their propensity to self-destruct though, Robinson still had a chance to win. Trailing 12-6 with 3.37 to go in the third quarter, the offense drove 80 yards in an amazing 18 plays and used almost 10 minutes of the second half clock. It was the most determined effort by the offense all season long, and they were rewarded with a game-tying touchdown on a one-yard sneak by Gary Hoffman. But the Rockets still trailed in penetrations and had to at least stop Columbus and get across the 20 once more to advance to the semifinals on first downs. Columbus, though, drove for one more penetration, leaving the Rockets in the unusual position of giving the Cardinals a touchdown and hoping for another chance to score a touchdown and a conversion to win. But it wasn't meant to be, as a fourth down pass fell to the turf uncaught. The playoff trail had ended, but a 10-4 record, five consecutive shutouts, and a district co-championship is something all Rocket fans and players can remember with pride.